Okay. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, I know there was quite stiff competition between on the slot, so thanks for coming on my session. Uh, if anyone would want to like, would like to download the slides, they are available on uh, Google, sli Google Slides. Uh, oops. My remote doesn't work. Okay, topic of this presentation will be uh, write custom code or use a country module. And that's a question um, very important for beginner Drupal developers. And uh, I'm Rafa Wenden, I'm working in DC agency. I'm a software engineer. You can find me on Twitter or uh, DDO. I think this is good enough. Uh, it's recording to the system, so you need that. Okay. Uh, why this question is important? Uh, because every project starts with three. Uh, every project uh, has some constraint like uh, the price, uh, quality, and speed. Uh, if we, be, we, be, we be, will be able to answer this question, uh, we, can, we can do a project which is cheap, which is good, and which is fast, and it's using Drupal module. Uh, First, we need to know what the requirements are. So, first one is uh, asking questions to our client, as many as possible, so any doubts can be solved. Uh, we should uh, be excited when a non starter requirement will come out, because it's a new feature, something that we can create. Uh, and acceptance criteria is a good start, will tell us a lot about, uh, about the functionality which client needs, and we can have few uh, solutions for that. Uh, the first one is using country, country module. Uh, the second one is in country module with a patch or using a patch uh, or patching a country module that is leaking a functionality that we need. Uh, or create a custom module. So uh, we can make this decision by uh, following flowchart. So first we need to search uh, for a country uh, module if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then we just write a, a custom module, very simple. Uh, if, it, if it exists, then we evaluate this module. Uh, we check what kind of functionality it has, if it solves uh, our needs. If uh, it has everything that we need, then we just use it. If not, then we need to check if any patch or any sub-module exists, so we can fulfill this requirement. If the patch exists, then we just use it. Uh, if the patch doesn't exist, then we need to uh, estimate how much effort we'll, we will need to, uh, to uh, implement this functionality. If, uh, if it's a complex change, then if it's not a complex change, then we just uh, create a patch for this module. If it's a compl complex change, if we're changing like 80% of that module, then it's just faster to create our own module. And when we use a country module, it something, sometimes can be uh, much more than we need. And uh, functionality that is provided with this module can be sometimes complex to edit and use. But uh, code is not the only thing that is <laughs> important. <laughs> There's also community, community that supports that uh, module. And uh, there are a few advantages of using uh, committee solutions. First one is security. Uh, if we have more users, uh, then it's, um, it's a free QA. So we can explain that to client that you have a quick free, free QA. So that's a good thing. Uh, flexibility. Uh, if a module is contributed, then probably it has much more than we need, or just a lot. Um, and the maintenance. maintenance. Uh, someone else is writing uh, and fixing bugs for us. But there are also disadvantages, uh, like uh, module could include out of 
a general functionality that we don't need and it's just a bigger code base with a lot of hooks and those hooks are executed with each, with each request. And it might not play well with other modules that we are using on site. Um, it also could be difficult to change the de default behavior or the UI. So if you know now uh, what kind of uh, disadvantages the module has, we can start to search for the right one. Um, on Drupal.org there are more than 30,000 of modules and I personally started using a Google custom search to find one and you also can ask on ERC, ERC for that module. Uh, so how Google custom search works? So you have a, a specific uh, <laughs> text field on the bottom and you can provide your own. I personally use uh, Drupal module uh, engine name and I'm using a module keyword as a, as a keyword for the search. And the S sign is a specific uh, placeholder which will be used as a search, search uh, query. And then uh, if I type module and press tabulat tabulator, then uh, this search engine is added on the front and I can search for rules form. Then I can see um, results as here. So it's really, it's really nice to way to search Drupal modules. Uh, I prefer this one than the Drupal org search because it's used Google and it's more accurate. And if I find that module, um, then, I'm need, then, then, <laughs> then I need to review the profile page. First, I start with the image um, because image can tell me more than even the best description. Then I, I'm going to the description. I read what kind of functionality this module has. Then I'm checking uh, project information, uh, status of development in my tense, and also how many times it was installed and downloaded. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, releases and checking uh, if this module has a stable release and when it was updated the last time. Next one, I'm checking how, uh, what was the last time when a maintainer was committing to that module. And I'm checking the issue queue. So uh, if there are many bugs that are, that are open, then it's a bad sign. If there are many bugs and many issues, then it's a good sign because uh, it means that the committee is using this module and they are behind it. And the next thing is statistics. Um, I can easily check if the maintainer is responding to the issues and it's closing, it, it's closing them. If I find this module is doing what I need, then I need, need to test it. A uh, good way to test a module is a simple test me. It's a website where you can just type the project name and, and it's installing Drupal instance for you. Another option is Drush Quick Install. Uh, it's using SQLite and with one command you can install uh, Drupal and, and add a module to that stack. Uh, then you have to discover uh, what's offered out of the box. So we're just testing the module, trying to configure it and how it meets your, uh, how it meets your needs. After you're done, you review the code if it follows Drupal standards. Then you check if it's extendable with APIs and hooks. Then you try to understand how functionality of that module works. And you check if there is a gap between your country module, uh, that module and your uh, requirements. If there is no gap, then you can use this module. But if there is no gap, then, uh, then you have a problem. And you kind of feel disappointed. <laughs> but don't give up just yet. Because there are things that you can still do. You can discover missing functionality. Starting uh, to explain what this module not do. Uh, checking how much it's missing. It's 20% or 80%. The bigger the gap will be, then it will take you more time to, fi to fill it. So you need to check for committee solutions. Uh, the issue queue is a good place to start. So you search for Apaches there. You can also search for uh, 
in Google like for our keyword like group or module and functionality. Uh, you can close the gaps with community help and uh, estimate their effort. How complex are the changes if there is if there is there isn't an a community solution? How confident is uh, in ability to make the changes are you? Or if there is enough time to make those changes. So first we need to talk to the client, but don't be afraid. So if you <laughs> talk to the client, you need to ask him, uh, tell him how much time will take uh, the, those changes. So he need to be informed if it's a big change or small. Then uh, you need to tell him that fighting with Drupal is not always a good idea uh, because Drupal has some limitations and you need to tell the client what kind of limitations it has. Uh, and you, if, if after you tell him that, maybe he, he will change his mind and you will use just country modules with any, without any changes to it. Uh, but if the client doesn't want to uh, go with the country, then you, you can create a patch. And to create a patch, uh, you just create an issue on Drupal.org. Uh, you always create a patch on, against the dev version, not the stable one. Uh, how to create a patch can be found under this URL. And then you just add the patch file, the issue queue, and wait for the review from the maintainer. After it's merged, you get, uh, you get uh, credits for that. But if it's a big change, then you create a custom module. And creating custom modules is a good way to contribute. Because don't contribute. By contributing, you are becoming more rockstar. And a few words about writing custom modules. Uh, we need to keep in mind who will take care of that functionality after you. If it's a site builder, then probably it's not a good idea to create a custom module. But if it's a group of uh, developers, then you can be confident that they can handle it. Uh, you need to consider a possibility to contribute back this module if it's a new functionality. And you need to keep in mind that Drupal API is robust, so can, you can really you can easily create complex uh, stuff with this API. And your imagination is the only limitation. But you need to remember that it can go much further than you want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't try to imagine too much. <laughs> because it can go out of the borders. And <laughs> when you decided to write the custom <laughs> code, uh, check Drupal developing, uh, development, developing modules site, uh, which will tell you how to do that in the best way. Then uh, remember to follow Drupal coding standards and make use of Drupal hooks and APIs. Then, of course, test your code and if it's possible, create automated tests with simple tests. And if you've done all of that, uh, your module will be perfect. <laughs> so, if you decided to contribute that module, uh, be 100% sure that it's useful for others. Uh, name it appropriately. So, if you're creating a sub-module for Workbench, then make, uh, name it Workbench something. Uh, fill the project page using a template provided, provided on Drupal.org. And then be an active maintainer. I personally recommend this article from Dries how to be a responsible maintainer. And then, just to recap uh, how to do it, search the module. If you find it, uh, then continue. If not, build a custom module. Um, evaluate if it has all functionality that you need. Then use it, it has. If it doesn't have all functionality, then try to search for a community patch or community submodules. If it has a patch, then use it. If it doesn't, then check uh, how big the change could be. If it's a big change. If it's a small change, then uh, create a patch and contribute, contribute it back to the community. If it's a big change, then create a custom module because that's already <coughs> what you're already doing. And any questions? No?
Yes. Um, can I ask a question about some of your jewels in Gilda products? Um, uh, some of my jewels particularly seem to make things complicated, but that's the default way to install my jewels throughout. You can get it will make it a easy to get to have my jewels. And then it seems like you have more overheads of needing a second remote Gilda product to adjust to that module if you make any of your own changes to it or you fork it or something like that. Is it ever better to do a module inside your main project repository instead of a sub-module, or would you look at that? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question. You're asking about downloading modules with Drush? Well, no, I'm asking about when you maintain modules, whether you would always have a separate Git repository for each module, mm -hmm. um, or if it's okay to... You combine it into yeah. part of the wider project yeah. as one well Git repository and not use the sub-module? I think it depends on the project. If that module is... Uh, if uh, hmm. if de it depends on the functionality. If, uh, if the mo sub-module is totally... Uh, can work totally... S uh, achieve different functionality, then it makes sense to uh, use different repository. But if all that sub-modules... Uh, can combine it into an uh, integral uh, stack, then it makes sense to use the same repo. Any more questions? Yes? At what point does uh, formal testing come into the business about content and the customer? You might not be able to see a few days to get slow down the site. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do that when you're evaluating, when you're checking the code. And general t when you're doing general tests of this module, then you can do also performance tests. Any more questions? So thank you. That's all I had prepared for today. And see you in the path. <laughs>